a previous time I had interviewed you, we had talked about you getting shot on three different occasions. Yeah. And if people want to see that clip and that interview, they can uh, click the link in this description. But uh, you end up getting shot for a fourth time since I've interviewed you. Unfortunately, yeah. And you say you've been 17 and 0. Yeah. Which means 17 bullets have penetrated your body? Yes, I've been shot 17 times. Four different occasions. When we interviewed you on three different occasions, you were 11 and 0. Yeah. Now I'm you're 17. 17 and 0. Yeah. Now, can you explain or address the very last time, the fourth time, the fourth occasion you were shot? Yeah, this, this is in the last time too, man. but I'm not going to get into like details exactly what happened, but what I will say is, what I will say is that, you know, at first, I, I, I was blaming other people at first until I took responsibility because, all right, so let me put it like this. So where I came, when I, when I moved from Philly to Atlanta, I came out here doing videos. I was, I didn't hang with people like me. I hung with like funny Insta, Instagram people and funny people and all that stuff like that. And for a while, I used to try to like tone who I really was down just so I can fit in with these type of people. And it's different occasions where like the real me will come out though. If I like say perfect example, like this is one example that actually happened. I went out, I was with an influencer, social media guy. Never been through what I've been through. You know, never seen none of that. So I'm out one time, we had a gas station, we about to go to Rolling Loud, Rolling Loud. And a guy was selling CDs at a gas station and um, I'm like, yo, we running late, we gotta go. So he like, um, the dude run up and like, yo, no CDs. And I'm like, yo, we gotta go. So the dude, you know, come to my car and all like, yo, nigga, like, why the fuck you, you know, I'm trying to sell CD. How about the will, you know, nigga, what's up? Like, you know what I'm saying? He, the, the dude I was with, I don't wanna say names, but he made me feel like I was like tweaking. Like I'm like crazy, I'm tripping and stuff like that. And, you know, that stuff kind of like, like for a while I've been battling like demons within myself because I've been battling like who I really am or who I'm supposed to be. I'm this person that come out of Philly, and this and this this is not to glorify anything, but where I come from, I'm very fair to my city. A known hitter, like like real talk, like you know what I'm saying. So it's like if you in Philly, if you don't know of me, I mean if you don't know me, you definitely know of me. My name ring bells for real, for real. So me coming from that world and then coming to this world. With, with dudes that never seen anything, been through anything, it's like they thinking I'm crazy off my reactions to things. But in my head, I'm protecting us. You feel me? So they made me feel like I was crazy and all that. And then at the wild, like this stuff, it just it just got to me. And then this situation when where I just got hit, I feel like I seen it ahead of time, but I didn't. I could have, I could have, you know, I could have avoided it, anything. But I thought of what they tell me, oh, you tripping. So maybe I thought at the while, maybe I am tripping. Maybe I am letting my past, you know, affect my, my present. And by that, I made the biggest mistake of my life and it happened to me. I got shot and I could have lost my life that day. You know what I'm saying? I regret it never again though. So at the while, I just start, start separating myself from them type of people, you know, people that just not like me. I mean, and the good guy, good people, you know, but Back in my time, these dudes that I would have never even spoke to back when I was active in the streets. But, you know, now, like I said, good dudes, I love them, you know, it's whatever. But I just know that it's, you know, it's certain situations you can't just be with certain people because they mess your head up. And when we say the streets, we're talking illegal activity. Not even legal. I'm just saying, like, in principle, like, if I know I'm about to go to this spot and I know that, it's supposed to be like some hood dudes, whatever it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know not to take this type of person with me because I know that if anything does happen, they won't know how to react, like how I would react. And and when I react, they gonna think I'm tripping, I'm crazy, and you know, all this other stuff. But in reality, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm protecting myself. I've been through a lot. I've been through a lot in my life. Not even, like, forget being shot 17 times. I've been through a lot. When I was in high school, I lost. I was in a. Uh, I was involved in a uh, shootout broad day at the school. 
I lost a friend of mine. A cop killed one of my friends. I've been in cars in Philly that have been shot up. Two of my homies got shot. And, you know, I had to fight my way out. Like, this stuff is real. Like, this stuff mentally ruined me. Like, for real, real. Like, and it's crazy because I, I, I couldn't talk to nobody about this before. Like, I, they made me, in, at the 2000, 2011, when I got shot, they made me go to the, um, they had a psychiatrist come see me. That's when I was diagnosed with, like, PTSD and all that. But even then, I still ain't really talk, like, about much. I didn't say much. I always, like, protect myself when I talk. So, this time, I'm thinking about, you know, really going to, like, go talk, like, to somebody, like, a psychiatrist. I've just been, like, a little hesitant about it, but I really want to go, like, talk to somebody because I've been, like, a lot, man. Like, and, and around that time when I was in Philly and I was in the streets, I didn't really see how much that stuff affected me. Like, I was getting shot every year back then, this year, that year, this year. You know what I'm saying? And it didn't affect me. I'm still, as soon as I got to the hospital, I'm on a block, got my crutches, my, my uh, sling. I mean, like, it didn't do nothing, but this time, it really, like, I don't know, man, it just, it, it just did something to me mentally, man. It's like, I could tell that I'm not, you know, that I'm not for the streets no more, but I'm glad it did happen, though, because it was a reminder. Because, like I was telling you, for a while, I was, you know, I was battling with, like, who I was supposed to be. Like, because I'm, I'm hanging around with these soft dudes. Then, even this, I call back home. Hey yo, um, hey bro, was I'm tripping? I'm t I explained the situation. Was I tripping? Nah, bro, I did the same thing. But then I got people out here telling me, nah, you crazy, bro. They, they, they dude wasn't knowing nothing. Like you know what I'm saying? So that's just I messing with my head. And, you know, and I just man, I don't know. When it comes to uh, wanting to talk to a mental health professional, and uh, you stop yourself from giving and submitting full details of what you've gone through to get uh, better help is is part of the reason maybe a thought of some of the details may incriminate you in some sort of way that's exactly why and that's why i don't see myself like really saying too much but i think i'm ready now like you know i still won't say certain stuff but i you know just to express myself it's just hard for me to like sit in front of somebody and really like talk like and tell them things i've done and you know like it just I be thinking they all like work with the feds or something. Like, they gonna get me locked up. So you know. So there's a part of you to fully get help that wants to release all the details and, and and just give yourself away so you can get the best help you can mentally. But a fear of incriminating yourself with some of these details and that sort of thing stops you from doing that. And yeah. now you're kind of stuck in between. You've gotten some help before, but not maybe totally full because you weren't able to submit yourself in that way. And now you're stuck in between this rut of, maybe you're kind of like, kind of fixed, but not really. Yeah, but you know, yeah. Like, and you know, that stuff is real though, because it's like a lot of times, like I was saying, like, so I ain't finished what I was saying last time. So basically, like, when I was back then, back then it didn't affect me as much as it do now. And then when you, you know, I've been away from the streets for a little while now. I haven't been active like that. So it was like, now, like, I have, like, I be having, like, breakdowns sometimes, too. Like, you know, a lot of people not going to say this, but I lost a lot of homies. Like, I was just telling you, like, me been in cars that got shot up. I lost in high school. I never even got a chance to... I got my diploma, but I never even got a chance to walk. I never went to no prom. I never, all because of violence and stuff that was going on. So it's like, this stuff is like, it's just, it just, it just crazy, man. And it's like, now, by me in Atlanta, it's like, I, I see everything that, that I, or I feel everything that I didn't feel back then. So I have, I can be, I can, sometimes I drive and I just be thinking, I just start crying, break out, you know, like, it's so crazy, man. And then getting shot, all them, man, this stuff is crazy, man. This stuff is just crazy. Okay, you haven't fully submitted yourself and given yourself away detail-wise to a mental health professional yet, but have you ever given yourself to somebody or let somebody in completely, whether it was a family member, a, a personal friend, something of that nature that... The most I talk to is I got, I got a personal friend that I talked to. That's about it. And have you been 100% detail-wise with them, or, or no, you still hold back? No, I'd be 100%. And has that helped you? 
releasing uh, to, that information, releasing those details, getting things off of your chest. at the moment, I feel chest. like it helped, like, momentarily. Like, it, it helped me at the moment, but longevity, I don't know. I think, I think, honestly, I don't think, I think all this stuff is, like, within time, like, you know. But I don't know, I've been like this for a long time, though. Like, the first time I got shot was in 2010, and then here, a decade later, I got shot again. And, I don't, you know what's crazy, though? I used to think that me being this way, me having this mental problem, kept me alive. Because, like, so what I got, they say, our PTSD, it keep you on alert uh, times 100. So I always felt like it just, you know, kept me alive, long, like, you know, and be on point and stuff like that. But this stuff is stressful, and it's like, it, it, it weighs a lot on your brain and got to keep looking and stuff is, is it's a lot, man. The stuff that you're describing sounds like stuff in a video game, sounds like stuff in movies, sounds like stuff in combat. When you yeah. talk about losing people, when you talk about violence, when you talk about shootouts, these are things that a lot of people on a macro level will never get a chance to personally go through. All right. What are you seeking from a mental health professional? What do you, what do you, or if not a mental health professional, what are you missing? What do you feel like you need help with? What do you feel like is the missing link or thing here that, that you are striving for? I don't know. Sometimes I just, I just want to feel regular again. I just want to, you know, I be want to feel like how it was when you were a kid. Like, you don't got no worries in the world. Like, you get to just live life. You don't got to worry about nobody trying to kill you or harm you any type of way. Like, it's just, you know, I just want to feel like that again sometimes. When it comes to beef, ops, things of that nature, is that something you still worry about? Is that something that still can come back to haunt you? Is that something that... When I'm, I mean, when I'm home, when I'm back in Philly, yeah, I gotta, I gotta move accordingly. I gotta move in a certain way because I know, you know, I know what's gonna go down. You know, and it come with the game. You know what I'm saying, you know, you, that shit, that shit come back. So, I, you just gotta move accordingly. So I don't for like, like worry, but you know, you know, I don't know. But one thing I will say that you know what's crazy. I remember, like I was saying back then, I didn't care if I lived or died back then. Now that's like my biggest fear is dying. I don't want to die. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got, like, my son, like, I got my family. I see how it felt. Like, even I just got shot, you know, a couple months ago. I see, like, how it affected my mom, my close friends, my son, my sisters. Like, they was, like, my mom flew down here to see me. was in tears, like, and I'm like, man, you know, it's cool. I just, I don't, I don't know, man. When I look up the definition of a therapist, According to Talkspace.com, a therapist, more specifically a psychotherapist, is a licensed mental health professional who helps clients improve their lives, develop better cognitive and emotional skills, reduce symptoms of mental illness, and cope with various challenges. Are you seeking any of that still? As far as what, like, is I'm trying to seek that? Like, yeah, are you seeking any of those items I just noted there? Yeah, I would say so. Are you seeking an improvement with your life? Develop better cognitive and emotional skills, reduce symptoms of mental illness, and cope with various challenges. And that's a broad definition of a therapist. But Yeah, I would say that. All of the above or something specific there? All of above. Now, I've interviewed somebody that's been shot one time. Right paralyzed from the waist down. Right. You've been shot 17 times, and I watched you walk through the lobby. I didn't even see you limp. Bless. Do you ever think about or comprehend that? Yeah, like, I honestly, I, I think about it all the time. Like like I said, I know a lot of people that died, like, especially this year, so many people that got shot and died. And I just be thinking, like, a lot of times I'm like, why? Like, why I'm still here? You know, one of my homies got shot literally like a month before I did. I got shot with uh, June, in the June. He got shot in um, May. He's paralyzed now. He got shot one time. So I just be thinking like, you know, why? 
I just don't know why. So I'm just trying to figure out my purpose. That's all. You know, figure out what I'm what I'm doing here, what I need to accomplish, and you know why I'm still here. But overall, I'm blessed, though, man. I'm blessed. Have you ever figured out that reason? What reason? Why you're still here? No, I'm still figuring it out. Things to spread my message. To be honest with you, that's what I think. I, I think God using me, you know, spread knowledge to the youth. So I got this book coming out. You know, talk about my life. Like as soon as I, I um, after I got shot, I was on bed rest for a little while. And the whole time I'm in the house just writing. Like you know, got this book coming, a documentary. And like I said, this was a this was a reminder, like a reminder that the street shit is not what I want. Cause for a while I told you me battling, like me coming from where I come from, being out here around these type of dudes that never see nothing, it like it messed my head up. And to the point that I'm like, man, I can't be around these, you know, clown ass niggas. I need to get back to what I know. And this was a reminder, like, no. Like you know what I'm saying, I feel like God let me get like wanted me to get shot. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad it happened too, because it got me back on what I need to be focusing on, you know, and not going backwards. What is the name of the book? Stillborn. Where can people find it? It's going to be on Amazon, ebooks, uh, everywhere. I'm going to have uh, hard copies out in stores. It's, it's, it's going to be everywhere. Every platform, I'm going to have it on my website, in my body, on my Instagram. And uh, what is your website? Uh, ucnasty.com. And it releases on Thanksgiving of 2020? Yes. Now, I know that you withhold information from a mental health uh, professional in the past. How detailed do you get with this book? How open are you with this book? I'm, are you I, still withholding details in this book? I, I withhold some things, but to a certain extent, like, I, I tell a, I tell a lot. Like in this book, you really learn a lot about me, like a lot. Like from my childhood to how I got the name Seafood, how you know Uzi Nancy came about, which I just explained to you, a, a lot. Like a lot of things people be wondering about me, they gonna find out in this book. To how I was a good kid, straight A student, got caught up in the streets, you know. Like it, I don't want to say. Why, matter of fact, because I want people to read it in the book. But it's an incident that happened that got me, you know, to get involved in the streets and, you know, all that. All that. You, you're going to hear about everything from boxing, how I stopped boxing, you know, when I started boxing, you know, how great I was at it, uh, school events, when I was going to school, how I got kicked out, and, you know, like everything. The incident I was thinking about when my friend got killed when I was in high school, everything. When it comes to this book, did this help you mentally? Actually, it did. It felt good. Like it helped me, like like mentally, like like, and but it also brought back a lot of like you know memories as well. Think about my homies and stuff we did together, and I'm just like, wow, man, like I came a long way. Is this something you always wanted to do? Write a book, or was this spontaneous? Was it the fourth shooting that led to you writing a book? No, you know what's crazy? Because actually, all right, so the first interview man you ever did, I was working on a book around that time. Okay. But then I stopped. So after this incident just happened, all I did was basically just finish it. And made it, made it like a little better, like went through the whole thing, edit things, took things out and just, you know. So I'll say it'd be something I wanted to do for a while. How long? Do you think this book took from the time you started it to the point where you finished it? Time-wise, rough estimate. Two, three years? <laughs> like, yeah, it'd be, yeah, it'd be about that. Did you have help with the book or is this sh entirely written by you, entirely, every single word? Entirely written by me. Didn't have an editor look I had over? A, yeah, I had an editor go over it, but everything's written by me is what I, you know, 
all the, you know, you know the work of an editor. So they, you know, just when basically proofread everything, all the, all the, and format it for me and everything like that. But everything's written by me. How do you find that? How do you find an editor for a book? Um, honestly, I was I was uh, searching for a while. That's actually been the why the, the delay in you know my book. But actually, a friend put me on. Like you know, I know somebody that you know. That's what they do. They didn't release books and blah blah blah, and that's how I got into that. And that's what made my job easier. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, you know, let me finish you know doing this, and I'm gonna send this over to them, and you know, like that. And do they charge a fee for that, or do they get a percentage of the sales? How does no, that they, work? No, they just charge a fee. How much does something like that cost? Um, not yet. You don't want to say? No, it's not yet. What's that? Not your business. Okay. <laughs> it's like, no, but, no, but they charge me about, um, how much they charge all together? In fact, no, I don't want to say that because I don't, only reason I'm I don't I'm not gonna say that is because I don't want they business out there. So what they did for me, I don't want you know, and that affect business with other people. They might help. You know what I'm okay. saying so. That's the reason why I'm not gonna do that. Now, what's the meaning behind the title? And give me the whole concept of this of of the the title, the choice, and how you came up with it. And give me the whole story there. Stillborn. So you know, when you hear still invincible. Strong, you know, all them, all them things of that nature, you know, and born. It's like you know, I was, I was born still, still born. God made me special, you know. I survived a lot, like you just asking, how I um, you ain't see no limp, no nothing. And you know what's even crazy? The last time I got shot, I got shot in my main artery. I lost a lot of blood, and I knew something was wrong. Because before I got hit in my neck, before like like years ago when I got shot, I got hit in my neck, and I was still able to like you know, fight my way out of it, get away, blah blah blah. I was still you know moving around. This time I went out like this, like fast. I knew something was wrong, and when I was in the hospital, I had like seven blood transfusions. I had to get all that blood back at me, back at me. Even now, I'm still like smaller than I was. I lost like 20 pounds. You know, lost a lot of blood, so, you know, but I'm getting it back, though. Which artery? Um, right here. And you're off camera, you're showing your thigh, your yeah. left thigh. Mm-hmm. An artery in your left they thigh. They said it was a hole like this in my artery. So they had to, like, put veins back in my leg and, you know, um, you know, all that. My artery, I already transplanted and put um, veins and stuff in there because uh, blood wasn't flowing uh, to my foot anymore. And they were shot because um, I've been hitting the shot on this leg before. And um, I had a rod. I had my femur taken out and I got a rod in my leg. So they were shot that, you know, by me getting this leg again and I didn't lose my leg. So, but, you know, once again, that was God still born. Oh, so that you're saying if you didn't have that rod where they shot you, you might have been able, you might have had that amputated? No, they was, I'm saying they were shot that my leg wasn't amputated oh. because I had that rod in my leg. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. they was like, they just didn't, they was in there like, I hear them talk as I'm out of it. They're like, wow, yeah, this is a blessing. And you know, so, you know, God, honestly, God knew I wouldn't be the same without my, you know, I had my leg. I wouldn't be somewhere depressed if I wanted to finish this book. And then, so, you know, like I said, everything happened for a reason. And you're referring to the fourth time you got shot is the artery situation. Yes. Still born, and I don't want this going over people's heads like I'm like like I'm saying I'm invincible and stuff like that because we all can get touched, we all can die. All I'm saying is, from my incidents, what happened to me? Invincible, strong, you know, born, born strong. Like God just made me special. So, what inspired you to write the book initially? Because you mentioned. This was something three years ago when we did our first interview and you had already been shot three times that you started. Yeah, 
just just wanted to put my story out there. Like, just I feel like my story is like very. It's different. It's different, man. And then, a lot of people just don't know. Like, when I started doing videos and all that stuff like that, people would see me blow up doing funny stuff. But I started doing funny videos to give people a different impression of me. My whole life, I've been called crazy or. Like, people scared of me. So I'm like, let me get some people something different, like, to look at me in a different way, you know? So, and I'm like, I'm going to just put my story out there. And I just I want people to know everything about me. Like, because, you know, some people fail to realize, they be like, oh, he crazy. But it's always more than one side to somebody. When it comes to some of the details you reveal in this book, were you afraid to expose yourself the way you did? I was at first, I'm not going to lie. But you know what's crazy? When I first started writing in 2017, I was, I'm writing that thing, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, I should take this out. Like, I'm like, I don't know, but as time went on, and you know, as I said, I just finished it in 2020, I'm like, you know, hey. Has family members or people in your inner circle or friends had a chance to read your book? Yeah, yet? they love it, love it. They're like, yo man, you like, when they read it, they looked at me and said, yo, you was amazing, like, your story. Like, you know, it's crazy, like, one of my close friends, he read it, he was like, bro, I had no idea this about you when you was a kid. Like, I had, like, no idea, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you, and he around me every day, and he didn't, like, certain stuff I was saying, he had no idea that, you know, I went through this, or that's how I got this when I was young, like, you know, so, yeah, it's dope. I'm excited about it. Has there uh, been anybody that's read it that said, Man, some of these details should not be out. No, I didn't hear that. Is there an audio version of this? No, but it's going to be one. When it comes to maybe controversial parts to the book or chapters that stand out that people might be surprised to hear, can, uh, care to share any of those? Oh, to say that again? When it comes to any controversial parts to the book or chapters, that stand out that people might be surprised to hear. Care to share any insight on um, on those? Surprise! Let me see. I feel like the whole I feel like the whole book is gonna be like that. Like they gonna be like not controversy like like that, but I feel like they just a lot of things gonna be like wow. Like you know what I'm saying like like they just it's gonna it's gonna have people like out these seats like wow like it's like it's a movie like like they gonna be. It's one of them. It's like gonna be one of them real act like fresh even not like if everything fall through how I want it, the movie it's gonna be crazy, man. So much action and real, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's dope. So is the movie based on the book or is the movie The movie gonna be based on the book. Okay. Yeah, people people already when they like I told you this my close friend that read the book was like, yo, it's like a movie. Like reading it, like, yo, it's like he he didn't listen, he came to visit my house to pick something up. He didn't want to leave. He was stuck. I'm like, yo, check this out. He over there like this. I'm like, bro, don't you gotta pick your girl up? He's like, man. You know what I'm saying? It had you like like that much into it. Now, are you doing a movie because people are saying, hey, this book is like a movie, or no. you already had thoughts on doing that? That was movie already the plan. Did you wanna do a book first and then a movie? Or did you wanna do the movie first and then at some point a book no, or it just worked book, out the way? Book first, movie, and then Within then, within that time, I want to do a documentary as well. Oh, so there's a difference between the documentary and the movie. Yeah. W what is the difference? The documentary is going to be like, you know, like a documentary. People speaking of me, like when I was a kid, like people in Philly go to. I'm gonna go to, like visit certain locations where I was shot at in Philly, where I grew up at, stuff like that. The movie is gonna be like a movie, a real movie. A movie based on a true story. Yes. So some elements in a movie based on a true story might be exaggerated or some sort of nature to make it no, and more this, entertaining than what it is. Yeah, this is based on it's going to be a true story. But, you know, like you just said, though, some of that, too, though, if it makes it the movie better and then, you know, it's going to be what it is. OK, so. My final question with the book, when it comes to publishing and distribution, who do you go through for that? Um, so basically, the people um, I use as the editor, they have their own, like, 
distributing and company and everything like that. So they actually the ones that's helping me put like drop uh drop it on everything, Amazon, ebooks, everything. So they they actually helped me with that. Now this is my first book, you know, and I um uh, at the end of the book in my dedication I actually mentioned them because they helped this process so so much. Like, you know, it's my first book. I was like I didn't know what to do. I just was writing, and I'm like, you know, they helped me with everything. Anything else you want to mention? In Those are all my questions in regards to the book. Are there any other details, anything else you want to mention in regards to the book that I didn't? Yeah. Stillborn. <laughs> I want to mention that. It's lit. It's up there. Still like like or like Superman, man is still oh, okay, still okay. born, you know. Got you. Yeah. Okay. And who came up with the artwork there for that uh um that book cover? The production comp the distributing company I'm going through. We came up with it together and they just they but they did the, the cover for me, like the background and stuff like that.